him if you like. You go ahead and shout to the Lord. We're in the heavens. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
The scripture says they like rend the earth and the heavens with their voice, their shout. The sound of the trumpet, the sound of the shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, joyful, joyful, we adore you. Oh, God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts are yielded now before you. Responding to the Son of God. Oh, love you, Jesus. Oh, love you, Father. Oh, love you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father. I love you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Our hearts are yielded now before you, responding to the Son above. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Let me teach you how to prophesy, says the Lord. Let me teach you how to flow in the Holy Ghost, says the Spirit of the Most High. It's that place of adoration. It's that place of singing and making music and worshiping. As even the prophets of old were given a cymbal, given a harp, given a trumpet. Those who were singers were set in the place to sing. Praises unto the living God with all of their hearts. <laughs> Even as David taught them and as Samuel taught them. Two of God's prophets who stepped into a realm of interaction. Hallelujah. <laughs> that had not really been seen or had up until that day. They began to sing praises to the Most High and worship Him who is the Ancient of Days, who are captivated and lost, raptured over into the realm where that praise that God has created, that sound that heaven has made, is produced. For truly the Lord has created you for His praise, to sing forth His praise, to make known His praises in the earth. Uh, it's time now to learn. It's time now to give yourself over to a realm Ah, instead of just being entertained and listening, come now and begin to give your heart and sacrifice and offering. Hallelujah. Ah, let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a sharp two-edged sword in your hand. There is a praise found in those who know the realms of this glory land. Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. Praise Him. Praise Him. Ah, praise, Him. praise Him. Praise Him now. Praise Him. Lift up your voice and praise Him now. Praise Him. Praise Him now. Praise Him. Lift up your voice and praise Him now. Praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, lift up your voice now. Praise Him. Oh, yes, it's a flow. It's not something that you have to do. Oh, praise Him. Lift up your voice and praise Him. For from this flow comes an offering of sacrifice. Comes something so beautiful in His eyes. So praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye that adore Him, all ye saints of His, praise Him. Oh, lift up your voice and sing a song of gladness. Sing a song of praise. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Let everyone now praise Him. Let the song of rapture take hold of you. <laughs> Let the song of praises now ring from you. Praise Him, praise Him. All oh, ye saints of his, now praise him. Praise him, sun and stars. Praise him, moon that shines. Praise him, all ye hosts of heaven. Praise him. 
Praise Him. La robo kusiki yatai lo munjatai. La brabo for you were created for His praise. Rama mandeya sutoye le mangeya. Mandolo sutaye epe araba haya. Uraba ba 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 yete ya brabo. Iraba ba suti ya rebebe ishe ya baba yolo mungia taya. Praise Him. Praise Him. All ye saints of Him is now praise Him. Praise Him, sun and moon and stars. Praise Him, everything that has breath. Now praise Him, praise Him. You were created for His praise. Praise Him, praise ye the Lord. Praise Him, praise Him. Ah, praise Him, praise Him. All ye saints of His, now praise Him. Hallelujah. Come and bring an offering, a sacrifice of praise. Come praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. All ye saints of His, now praise Him. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. You were created for His praise. Created. Created. For His praise, yes, created, created for His praise. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Come praise Him, praise Him. Come praise Him, praise Him. Come praise Him, praise Him. Ah, praise Him, praise Him, praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Come now, all ye His saints, come praise Him. Oh, praise Him. You were created for His praise. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Come all ye saints, now praise Him. Praise the Lord, the Ancient of Days. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. All ye saints, now praise Him. Come praise ye the Lord. Come praise Him. Praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Just praise Him, praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. All ye saints of His, come worship His holy name. Come worship before the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. All oh, ye saints, now praise Him. Come praise Him. Come worship before the Lord. Keep going now. You'll step into prophecy if you'll keep going. Oh, praise Him, praise Him. Ah, oh, ye saints, now praise Him. Come praise Him. Come praise the whole holy name. Oh, come praise Him, praise Him. Ah, oh, ye saints, now praise Him. Hallelujah. Come praise. Come praise His holy name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come praise him, praise him. Come praise him, praise him. All ye saints in light, come praise his holy name. Hey, come praise him, praise him. Come lift your voice and praise him. Come worship. The holy name. Hey, come praise him, praise him. All ye saints now praise him. Come praise the Lord, the ancient of days. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Come praise Him, praise Him. Out of your spirit, now praise Him. Come praise the Lord. Come worship the Ancient of Days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me show you how to do it. Come on. Come praise Him now. Come praise Him, praise Him. Ah, oh, you saints, now praise Him. Come worship the Lord, the Ancient of Days. Hallelujah. Come praise Him, praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him. All ye saints now praise Him. Come worship before the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated. Just be seated. I'll talk to you a little bit. You want to turn this down? It's just so ringing loud. If you could please do that for me. Hallelujah. Look, there's a place of worship and praise. You know, that I want you to be able to find. Holy Ghost wants you to be able to find it. And so I'm going to do my very best to just show you how to do it, okay? And then just do it, okay? It's something that comes way deep, deep down inside. Doesn't come from your head at all. Don't have to do it. Hey, listen, see, the Lord, he created us for his praise. But I'm, a, I'm a concerned. I'm, a, I'm concerned. You want to fix this and turn it down? Take the ring out of it. I'm concerned that a lot of folks aren't, you know, they're not living for Father's praise. They're busy doing other things. You weren't created. You really, honestly, you weren't created to go to work every day. That happened because of the, because of the fall. That happened because of disobedience. You're created for his praise. Come now and praise him. Everybody praise him. Come worship before the ancient of days. I want, I want something to come out of hallelujah out of the depths of your heart it's better than a kiss it is a it's something that the Holy Spirit fills us up with hallelujah that he gives us hallelujah just for father not to be copyrighted not to be made you know you know an artist out of or to be seen with by the or to really to be even a blessing to other people's ears so much. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hear my mom. Come praise him. Praise him. Come everybody. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Say, I will praise him. No, 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 no. No, just sing it. Praise him. Praise him. Everybody praise him. La 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 here do this la 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 you can just hum your way in don't make it very complicated <laughs> you know this is like the first night of rehearsal for a for a musical that's a good 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 right there stop right there like the first night of rehearsal <laughs> for a musical look kind of manjera and a do this with me for a while Close your eyes. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I love you because you first loved me. I will praise you. I will praise you. Oh, God of eternity, I will praise you. I will praise you forever. I will praise you, oh Lord. I will praise you forever. I will praise you, oh Lord. I will praise you. I will praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, I tell you, maybe this is what you can do. And, uh, you know, there's, 
You know, we're look, I'm looking for a way for you to step over into the realms to begin to prophesy. I'm, not, I'm really not interested in anything that you can do, honestly, and I hope you're not too much interested in anything I can do. I'm interested in what the Holy Ghost wants to do for you and through you. See, the Lord's poured out His Spirit upon all flesh so that there is an opportunity for everyone to begin to move in a heavenly realm. And so what we want you to do is we want you to become like uh, people in the choir, okay? And you're following the leadership of a conductor. And you're going to be very sensitive to the conductor. You know, and if the conductor is, you know, leading you to sing softly, you start, leaving, you start singing softly. Your all eyes are all attentions and, and everything is just tuned in. <laughs> to, the, to the musical that the Holy Spirit would desire to lead us in. Amanasia no namonge asheya. Look, then do with me. Look, look here. Look here. Come on, I want to help you. you Got to look here. Don't, you could shut in and be quiet in your own house. I want you to be a part of the body of Christ here tonight. I want you to become part of that oneness that the Holy Ghost wants to make. See, you know, if you have two heads, there's two different directions to go. In fact, you know, if you have two heads, you're a mutant. If you have no head, you're a monster. And praise God, the church is not a monster nor a mutant. Amen. But the church is the body of Christ. And if the body of Christ is going to learn how to function as this one man and move in this anointing, then people are going to have to gather themselves up. You're going to have to take hold of your spirit and submit it to the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to give it to him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then what we're going to do then is we're just going to gather up and we're going to begin to worship him. You're going to connect. You and I, are we going to connect together? Hallelujah. Sadamaya Teranea. Listen, I found this when people are, are sick and diseased and overwhelmed. I, I've gone to people's sick bed where they were overwhelmed in pain and they were trapped in pain. And I grabbed their hand and I said, you look into my eyes right now. I commanded them to connect with me, to hook up with me. And when they did, the pain started to leave their body. There's even some of you sitting in this room right now. I, you were actually that person laying up on the bed that I did that to. Hey, <laughs> listen, this is the way it works. <laughs> this is the way it works. All eyes are upon a leadership. All eyes are upon someone <laughs> who is going to direct us in the ways of God. That's actually what music leaders are supposed to be. Worship leaders are supposed to be those who themselves are already connected with the Holy Ghost realm, already connected with the praise realm. And, and because they are already there, as you connect with them, you immediately become a part of that. If you're doing your own thing, if you're just all distracted, then nothing's going to happen. I want to take you, God wants to take you, and he's given empower, he's empowered me. To take you and lead you into a place where you begin to prophesy. Hallelujah. When you but also told you in Begin to speak by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Begin to think by the Spirit. Begin to sound out of the realms of the Spirit. You, now listen, be honest with me. Surely you have enough discernment to tell when somebody's anointed when they sing. Is that true? Uh, you can feel something in the atmosphere. And the more they've given themselves to that gifting and to that anointing and flowing in the Holy Ghost, the stronger it is, the more impactful it is. Isn't it true? Amen. Well, you can have that. You can immediately step into that. You don't just have to be captivated by it and go, wow, there's something changed in the atmosphere. You can actually be the part of that atmospheric change. You can actually begin to participate with the anointing. I mean, the, I've watched this. I've watched it in other people's lives as they've hooked up with the anointing and the ministry that God had placed in their lives or that they were with. I mean, when I... You know, the, the times that I have traveled with Carlos Anaconda, I think I've had the greater display of being able to see the powers of darkness immediately leave out of those who were possessed by demon spirits um, just because of the whole anointing that he flows in. And I'm just his servant. I'm just there hooked up with him. And I'm just following his lead. Hallelujah. I'm not doing my own thing. I don't have my own sermon to preach. I don't have my own ideas to espouse. I don't have my own, you know, uh, desires to pursue. I'm just there because I simply love the anointing. I love the realms of the presence of the Lord. And anything that God is doing, I want to be a part of it and I want to be more part of it. 
And I want you to be more a part of it. If there's anything that we need to do as the ministers of the Lord is we need to teach God's people how to function as the body of Christ. And I'm telling you, that is a very precise type of movement. That is an amazing organization when we take it from a physiological, chemical point of view, from a biological point of view, a bioprocessing point of view. The body is an amazing, wonderful uh, display of, of unity and praise God for the head because I'm telling you right now this that you're seeing I'm talking moving off ten fingers at the same time and walking this is all coming right from the head and it's because that the body is all connected with the head the body is not I don't have my little fingers not wanting to do something else right now my little fingers not wanting to hold a microphone it's it cooperative it's not rebelling against me and it's just all stiff and I'm trying to make it move because if it were it would be out of socket it would be disconnected from the joints and the tendons and the ligament that is there. But if this finger, along with all the rest of my parts, are connected by joint, by ligament, by tendon, by nerves to the head, then the head is going to supply something to the entire body. Hallelujah. And I'm going to see you la magisiki and then I'm going to buy you know, when we say shout to the Lord, we're not, really, we're not asking you to holler. We're really not asking to holler. We're not asking to give a holler. We're asking you to begin to lift up your voice out of the realms of the Spirit. You're going to have to purposefully train, allow yourself to be trained to be moved by the Spirit. And um, if you don't, then what you're going to do is you're going to train yourself to be moved by you. Or you're going to train yourself to be moved by sensual impulses. And so you say, well, pastor, you said to yell, and I didn't feel anything else, you know. So you said rather shout. So all I did is just yell because I didn't really know. I wanted to be obedient, and I didn't really know of anything else to do. Well, I mean, that is good, and, but you know what? You should be instant in the realms of the Spirit. You should be instant in praise as much as you should be instant in prayer. We want to teach you to live by the Spirit. We don't want to play make-believe Christianity we want to get you out of whatever it is that's causing you to not hook up with the Holy Ghost. Nobody wants to do make-believe Christianity. Nobody really wants to be a hypocrite, I don't think. I don't think anybody really wants to pretend and be two people. It certainly is a way to get yourself into a terrible situation of some kind of a mental disease state or really a demon-possessed state. We don't want that... My goodness, right? We don't want that happening to any, anyone. And so, look, I'm sure that everybody in this place here tonight has come to seek the Lord with an honest and sincere heart that you want to be able to now begin to flow in the Holy Ghost where the Spirit of the Lord is always moving you to where that it's not just every once in a while and we don't come to the meeting wondering, oh, no, wonder what mood they're in tonight. You know, wonder what this person's, go, what's going on in their life today. Wonder how many storms of life has taken them out. But aware that you're just always on, not just always on for people, not just always on for men, not just always on for your spouse, not just always on, you know, for the, 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 the things that you need to do in the areas of your responsibility, but just really always on for the Lord. The Lord has given to us a remedy for our day. You know, I, I wonder, has... The church so fallen away has, has the situation and the circumstance of our society become so grave that there is no possibility of having a, a revival and a great awakening again because people have no place or concept of, deal, of doing away with sin and coming out from the world and being separate. Because even, even vile people back two, three hundred years ago had a fear of the Lord. You know, they were raised in a realm of the fear of the Lord. There was the things about the, the, uh, the, the word of God and the things of the spirit of God in a Western society was far more, as it were, predominant in its impact than it is today. And, um, you know, the reality of it is Father's given us a cure. But if we don't participate with the cure, he's given us a, a cure. He says, he says, you can redeem the times for the days are evil. And he said, he made it very clear in Ephesians, how to redeem the times how to redeem the times for the days of evil. What did he say? He said, be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> and literally, it is, it is an ongoing, continual being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> and nobody should, dis nobody should disdain that or not want that or for some reason not have time for that because hallelujah. Ah, this is where joy is. 
This is where life forevermore is. This is where gladness is. This is where goodness is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we're we just, rejoicing in the, we just rejoicing in the goodness of our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Manda sayepe. One amen. Come on now. Why be silent? Come now. Do something. Do something. In the spirit, do something. No, don't close your eyes now. Do something. Do something. You're on the spot. Do something. Say something like, I love Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is good. He's amazing. He's a wonderful God. You're going to have to become active. Because otherwise, the church may be viewed as something paralytic. Okay? Or maybe something, something that is deaf and blind and mute. It would be terrible for the church to be deaf and blind and mute and a paraplegic. Wouldn't that be terrible? Come. Now you just start talking to the Lord. This is the place of his praise. This is the house of his praise. This is the place for you to begin to flow and move. Hallelujah. This is the place for you to say, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm ready to step into giftings. I'm ready to step into the realms of your divine glory. Look, I'm going to tell you, this is what God's going to do. You watch what he does. This is what Papa's going to do. And there may, be, there may be people in here that don't want to participate. You want to do things your own way. I'll tell you right now, it ain't going to work out for you, Okay. But everybody, this is you yield yourself. You yield your members. You yield your body. You yield your spirit. You yield yourself as, as servants unto the Lord and begin to participate with what the, you know the Holy Ghost said he wants to do in the church. We know what the Holy Ghost is doing in the church. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every person so that we may all brought, be brought together. And, you know, of course, King James says prophet, but so that we might be, all, all might be brought into a unification is, liter, is a better literal translation of that Greek text. But however you want to put it, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every single person to prophet or be brought in together. To one is given. Huh? The manifestation is, uh, of the Spirit is the word of prophecy, to the word of knowledge, to the discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. But we back up from that and we understand that all the excitement begins and the foundation of interaction with him begins as this church is overwhelmed with his presence and begin to speak as the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. Hallelujah. As the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. Lurani Isheya. Maybe you don't know isn't there. You can begin to say, Lord, give me utterance. And I'm going to say, and you can then begin to say, you know what? I'm going to learn what it means to get prepared to go up to meet with the Lord. I'm going to learn what it means to take upon myself the responsibility to function and flow as a member in the body of Christ. I'm going to understand the need that, that the church, the need that the world has to see the church living and functioning and operating as it's described in the Word of God. No one here tonight has to wonder whether or not I'm telling you the truth. The Word of God is very plain and very accurate on this that the spirit of rebellion and the, and the things that belong unto a spirit of this world has done everything and deception and strife and division and sedition has done everything to stop the church from being mobilized people just want to come and sit in mass and be here you know and and be and be hear words that would comfort them when they need to be corrected hear words that would make them feel at ease when there's when it's time to blow the trumpet in Zion but listen I'm talking to you tonight and I'm saying listen Listen, that's not the situation that you find yourself in. Where you find yourself in is at the crossroads of whether or not you're going to really go all the way to participate with the body of Christ as it's described in the Word of God. Or whether you're going to continue on doing the same things as you've done them up to this point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a hold of you. And I'm going to say, do something. I'm going to say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He's poured out His Spirit. God said, I tell you, surely as I live, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. The prophet uh, Habakkuk taking that up said the, 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 the earth would be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea or the glory of the Lord too as the water covers the sea. And the Lord gave to us the first beginnings of that when he poured out from on high the rain of heaven. When he poured out from on high the early and the latter rain. When he poured out from on high fountains. Uh, he, when he poured out from on high rivers so that out of our belly would begin to flow rivers. I mean I'm telling you if all of God's people <laughs> would allow rivers to come up out of them. 
spiritually, it wouldn't take long for the whole earth to be covered with a deluge like, uh, like during the flood of the days of Noah. It doesn't take long for the fountains of the deep to be broken up. And Manjea Kotayala Masaya, Muromositea, is a witness that the rivers are flowing out. Zedananebradai, Sodomageshapai, is giving praise most excellently. It's giving thanks most, giving thanks well, most perfectly, as, as Paul described it in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 and verse 16. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, come on now, dear people. Come on, let the Spirit of the Lord come upon you and begin to prophesy. Let there come a bubbling up. Let there be the prophet on the inside. Let there be, let there be the bubble up. <laughs> uh, there's a, the Hebrew word for prophet is Navi. And listen to me, the Hebrew word for prophet is Navi. And um, it, there is a word that we use that actually that is derived from, and it's Nabo. And Nabo means to bubble. Nabo. Nabo. Uh, Nabo. Bubble up. Rababa satara daya paya. Daramende yada pataya. Luramamba de yarasirinieti. Now, we don't go see an anamakia cananea kia tia taya. Ha 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 and then Papa says, well, I'll cause that to excel. But it doesn't, you know, you can just stay right there. Now, people are, scared. People are afraid because they say, well, you know, if you all speak with tongues, then there will come in those, um, you know, who, don't, who are, un, you know, ignorant, unlearned, and say, are you not all mad? You all just sitting there, you know, speaking in this heavenly language. We don't have really any, you know, concern about that these days because there just isn't enough of it even going on for anybody to ever even think that. However, what God wants out of that, the excel, God ex wants us to excel under prophecy. And, you know, Paul said, if I come speaking in tongues, what shall it profit you lest I also speak by the word of knowledge, by revelation, by prophecy, and by doctrines. And doctrines are the teachings of God by the Holy Spirit. Doctrines are not what you do when you open up Strong's con uh, Exhausted Concordance and start writing down scriptures. It's not doctrines. Doctrines are the teaching of God by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the teachings of God by the Holy Spirit are not going to con contradict anything that's said in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that's, but that's what is supposed to happen to God's people. You're supposed to be able to excel. You, what is it going to profit others if all you do is come speaking in tongues? You're going to have to excel. And so the, the Lord says, but if you all prophesy, the bottom line of it is we don't see that continuous flow of prophecy because people don't know how to relax. <laughs> they don't know how to flow. The other morning I said to, to my darling wife, I said, sweetheart, I said, what are you going to minister on? Because, I mean, I was like loaded. I mean, every barrel in my, you know, in, in, in the arsenal was fully loaded. And so she said, hey, I can just flow tonight if you want. That's the correct word, flow. I mean, it just, I mean, it, uh, there's no effort here. You're not under any, I mean, I, I'm afraid that too many people live under intimidation. They live under some influence of fear. That's going to stop you. Some influence of what everybody else was thinking about me. All this self-consciousness stuff. Oh, I'm afraid to do something wrong. My goodness. Living under that fear, you're never going to flow. You're never going to operate. Okay? You've got to be willing to just... And then I'm on Sunday, and then go into a realm, hallelujah, of just interacting with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit that so floods your soul with love that you don't, there is no restraints of fear. Fear is a prison, it, it puts restraints on your spirit. You cannot move, you cannot operate, you cannot function. Unforgiveness will, bitterness will, all kinds of malice and strife and sin will. You know, if I, if I had to t tell people and conceptualize pe poor people really what, the, anoint what uh, the anointing is about, I would tell you, example, for example, from 
Exodus chapter 29 and Exodus chapter 30, the anointing is all about bringing a person into a state of absolute holiness so that now they can interact and move around God's presence. That's what it was all about. It was, it was anointed oil rubbed upon the body. It was a, a anointed crown put upon the head. It was anointed garments to clothe the body. Everything was about, everything was about ultimately it becoming a holy crown, it becoming a holy vessel, a holy a holy body, a holy being, a holy garment, a holy interaction, shoes, everything that was a part of, of the priest that you read about. Exodus chapter 29 and chapter 30, that was the whole picture of the anointing. In the Old Testament, it's really, by and large, the whole picture of the anointing. It is to be separated to God and consecrated for a holy purpose. See, Father shows himself completely separated from all the world. He's, holiness is defined by him. It's found over 2,600 times in the Bible. It is not a, it's not a foreign uh, or an obscure word. Holiness is a description of who God himself is. It's not defined outside of him. It describes his love. It, it, it describes his presence. It describes his purity. It, it, it describes his works. It describes his ways. It describes his nature. Outside of him, there is no holiness. And what makes him holy is that he is, and, and, and that, that whole description of holiness is that it's isolated and totally separated from everything that is world, in the, that is in the world, that is that is common, that is ordinary, that is profane, that belongs to men. That's why he, you know, in in Exodus, I believe it's chapter sixteen, they said he was glorious in his holiness as he was displaying his power in the, in, in 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 when he comes and begins to interface with the rulership of the world, that being Pharaoh. And then now he shows a place. He said, I'll dwell, I'll dwell in your midst, but it's going to be in an isolated place, in an isolated realm that only those who I allowed, who are anointed, who are set apart, sanctified, and separated, are allowed now to come in and begin to interface with me and interact with me. He, he begins to describe his holiness. He describes his holiness in, in, in a radical way. Uh, when he begins to say to Moses, take off your feet, your shoes from off your feet, you're standing on holy ground. Why is it holy ground? Because he's there, okay? And that nothing, that nothing that belongs to the way that you've been living and the places that you've been going is even allowed to even to touch the ground here. Then he takes it to another level when he appears on Mount Sinai and he says, set boundaries up. Set up limitations. Set up bounds that no one else can come. Because I, this is totally separate. That's what it means. It's the separateness of separatenesses. It's the holiness of holinesses. It's absolutely everything that is foreign and contrary and absolutely different from the world. It's totally transcendent from the world. And the world is absolutely different. Everything you see in the world is the absolute opposite of God. And I hope that that's good news to you. It's great news to me. Everything. And that's why the Lord says, come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord, and I shall receive you. Because I'm, Father's, <laughs> Father's not going to come in and begin to interface and integrate uh, and merge in any way with the world or with the world system. He is separate from it. Jesus is described as being the one who is separate from sinners, separate from the world. Did he come into the world to save sinners? Absolutely. Was there any kind of union, any kind of communion, any kind of fellowship? Absolutely not. He, there is absolutely no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. It, people don't get this because most folks don't have even a place to put it, a, a way to categorize it in their thinking. But God says that friendship with the world, communion, fellowship, something that, I, that which you like, you want to hang out and you want to be able to do it, is actually an act of hostility, of act of, of high treason, uh, uh, of violence against the kingdom of God. And, um, you know, this is really a dividing line. So many people come and they hear people like me talk and they say, oh, well, he's just a throwback from long ago. He's, uh, you know, one person came and said, yeah, you know, I used to be like you. I used to be into holiness. You know, th these, these kinds of ideas and these kinds of concepts exist in people's mind and thinking. And it's because they don't even begin to understand or comprehend the reality of God who is separate from the world. 
and, and, he, and he gives to us a privilege of this transcendence. He gives us the privilege to transcend from a world of sorrow to a realm of joy unspeakable and full of glory. The transcendence, the translation. Before there was no transcendence. In theology of the old day, it would be say, you would have to say, God is the transcendent other. Literally, he is the transcendent other. He belongs in a totally other place, different realm, different place. And through good works and good deeds, we may be able to be somehow counted worthy and privileged to actually stand and gaze at him. Not to interact with him, just gaze at him. And then ultimately, and this is what Paul was saying when he said, I did everything, I, want, I, I did everything in, in, in obedience to the law and trying to obey the law, the righteousness which comes by the law. I was blameless. I was going after something that I know that is available for the people of God that have been called to his presence and given the gift of holiness. But then on the road to Damascus, he discovered a greater righteousness. He discovered the righteousness of God and suddenly God was not transcended other. God now had brought him into this wonderful mystery or revelation of a fellowship, not a, mystic, not a mysticism, because Judaism was in a mystical mysticism of through, through the process of, of good works, of mitzvah, of good deeds, and of, of doing what was right and continually reading the word and continually honoring God, that you would ultimately work your way from one level to the next level to the next level, and one day you would be worthy to sit at the table of the Almighty. And Father now in his loving kindness has given to us union, holy union, oneness. Jesus says in John 17, the oneness that you've given with to, that I have with you, I've given to them. The glory that you've given to me, I've given it to them that we may be one just, that they may be one just like we are one. Just as you are in me, I am in them. Now the Lord is dealing with you because he wants you to come into this oneness. He wants you to come into this agreement with him. And if you will, you will immediately be taken by the Holy Spirit and you will be immersed down, baptized into the very body or person of Jesus Christ. Then you can begin to function as a member in particular. If you are not a member in particular in the sense that you allow the Holy Spirit to immerse you, immerse you, baptize you, down in the body of Christ, you cannot be a candidate for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the midst of the church. You will be stuck. And I want you to understand how now to, I want you to understand how to do more than just join hands one with another. If I said everybody grab hands one with another, if you were just obedient and compliant and not, you know, concerned about, you know, something catching a, a virus or whatever, who knows or holding someone other's hand for some unknown reason, you would grab hands and you would be all connected. But God wants us to do something. He wants us to join hands in a fellowship in the things of the Spirit. He wants us to join hands in a realm that is supernatural. He wants us to rejoin hands in a realm that is miraculous. Now to do this, there has to be a moving of faith. A moving of faith that is according to the word and the instruction of God. To say, this is what Father wants. So, Father, I know what you want. I know that you want us to function as your body. As members with a, pur a purpose. Uh, with, uh, members with a particular calling. A unique and individual function. That all works in this wonderful realm of divine and holy and miraculous union. Something so beautiful. People have tried to create it, and it is awkward as it can be. It, it, it just doesn't go off. It doesn't go off like that beautiful orchestral musical that is so well rehearsed and so well refined and written by the best of the best. God the Holy Ghost wants to conduct something, and he wants to be in charge of something, and he wants to move something that is so majestical, so glorious, that would cause men to stand in awe. It, they would be more in awe of what Jesus Jesus Christ wants to do in the administration of his church than the queen of Sheba was with the administration of what went on in Saul's, uh, Solomon's, in Solomon's uh, reign and administration. The reality of it is, dear people, you're going to have to deal with some things that are going on in your life and in your spirit and in your heart that are keeping you from that. Because I'm telling you the pride of life. I'm telling you your own way. I'm telling you your own self-interest. I'm telling you your own ideas. I'm telling you your own purpose will keep you from ever bowing going so low to allow the Holy Spirit to take full control. Here, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm describing what God has done. 
I'm asking you, are you willing to go that far for the, uh, for the glory of the only begotten Son? Are you willing to be so bent? Are you willing to be so conformed unto the image that the Holy Spirit can take you and, and begin to move you as he would? It is a state of the heart that says, oh God, it isn't about saying, oh, you know, we really got to try to do this for a pastor. He's so earnest, bless his heart. He, he, he's, he's talking about something concerning the Bible. I can see it, so we're going to have to try to participate. No, you're going to have to, by revelation, have an encounter, a personal encounter with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who's now King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to cause you then to have a heart that hungers and thirsts after the things that is in his heart and that he desires to produce. He desires to see the majesty and the glory of his church shining with the brightness of his divine power and grace in the earth today. You've got to have a heart to want to have that. When you want that, when you say, I want to be a part of the body of Christ, Lord, I want to function. I don't care what it is, how it looks like. You know, I, I tell people around me that, that the Lord has allowed me to, to spend more time with on an individual basis. The Lord has said, like, I want you to take care of them. I want you to give them what, what I've given you or whatever the Lord says on, the, on that level. And I say, listen, what you have to do is you have to live a consecrated life that says, Lord, I want to do only what you want me to do. I want to be only what you want me to be. I want to go only where you want me to go. I want to live only like you want me to live. I'm yours. I'm not making any decisions for myself. That is a consecration to being led by the Spirit. That is a consecration to walking in the Spirit. That is a consecration to, to being filled with the Spirit. <laughs> you know, to walk in the Spirit, to live by the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness has come here to show us how to live in this sacred realm. And this is that place that, what, for which the anointing is given. The anointing is given for us to live in the sacred realm. <laughs> the, and, and, and if we would just give ourselves to living in the sacred realm, then what we start doing, we're doing out of heaven. Now our songs come out of heaven. Somebody says, that's different. Wow, that's different. That's unique. I have a friend of mine. He was sitting at the table with us one day, and this is how unique it is. And you may think, think it sounds self-serving, but it's not because it belongs to God. He, God had used him to reach over 12 million people. Yeah, 12 million souls. And really, truly, 12 million souls. And um, he was sitting at the table, and he was going through various different catalogs of music and, you know, just trying to make himself a worship album. And... Uh, so all of a sudden, I was sitting across from him, and I put in, I hit a song on Last FM. I just clicked it on Last FM just so he could overhear it because he said at his computer across from me in the table, and I, and I hit the song, and he goes, what's that? Who's that? I said, it's different, isn't it? He said, it's anointed. It's from heaven. I said, yeah, it's from heaven. He said, who is it? I said, that's Joshua. It's different. It's distinct. It's unique. It doesn't look like the world. It's absolutely opposite of the world. There's nothing common about it. It's, it it's, it's not ordinary. It's other. It's not ordinary. It's other. It's transcendent. It doesn't belong here. It's different. <laughs> and the different is a good different. It's not a bad different. It's a God different. <laughs> it's a divine different. Father, you know, I mean, I tell you. His, you know, his mercy and his grace overwhelms me. I, you know, it doesn't matter how many times I read the story of Ahab. And the treacheries of Ahab and the rascal, he needed to be, he, he would just, I mean, the innocent that he destroyed, the, 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 turning the hearts of God's people away from him, Mary and Jezebel, and let Jezebel be queen and, and rule him. And then, Father's getting ready to execute judgment upon him. He humbles himself a little bit, just a little bit. And the Lord says, look at Ahab, how he humbleth himself. I repent, I won't. I won't bring judgment upon him. It's like, Father, how can you be that merciful? I'm how can you have that much grace? People that don't know anything about the Old Testament say there's no grace in the Old Testament. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, to be convicted of adultery and stoned, you have to have two eyewitnesses. Who does that? I mean, there's so much grace. I can take grace and mercy from the beginning to the end of the Old Testament. I mean, Manasseh, the sin of Manasseh in Judah. Now that you're through Second Chronicles, you're more feeling how that, you know, kings is more about the northern, uh, you know, the northern kingdom and the northern kings, whereas uh, Chronicles emphasize more the southern kings and the kings of Judah. You're getting a feel of that now, huh? But look at Manasseh 
and how that Manasseh had so grievously sinned against God. He erected, he erected several altars in the holy place to worship other deities. He made idols of demons for people to bow down to. He burned his children in the valley of Hinnom and taught Israel to do so. At the end of his life, God sends the kings of Assyria, take him captive. He gets, ends up in Babylon. He repents. God hears his voice, has a soft and tender heart for him, restores him to his place and blesses him. Father, how can you be so merciful? How can you be so forgiving? Knock the guy upside the head. He, look at what he's done. He's destroyed your people. He's, Father's just so merciful. He's so, he's so devoted to us. He's looking for any possibility of any room to let him work. God opposes pride. He fights against it. But anybody humbles herself just a little teeny bit. Ahab was so full of pride. But he humbled himself just a little bit. It just took a little bit for God to move in and just forgive him and have mercy and show him grace. Manasseh is so, just did so evil. That God said that he would not turn back from his judgment against Judah, the southern kingdom, because of the sin of Manasseh. So Manasseh was forgiven as an individual, shown mercy, but the consequence of his sin ultimately resulted in actually the southern kingdom of Judah going into captivity, God's temple being burned and in shambles, his glory having departed Ichabod to the full manifestation of it. See, what you don't understand is that that's what's going on inside of me. I see that there was an Ichabod moment in the church. I see that the, earth, I see that the church is in shambles, that the glory of it and the fashion of it and the beauty of it has been torn down. Huh? I, 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 that's why I so relate to Ezra and so relate to Nehemiah. I so relate to Ezra when I see the old men who saw the glory of the temple before it was destroyed and before it was burned down. Now the young men are just shouting because there's a foundation laid, you know, in Ezra. Wow, there's a new beginning. The foundation's finally been laid in the house of the Lord. And they're shouting, but the old men are just weeping because it, they, they remember the glory. They remember the beauty. They remember the splendor of what it was once and, when, and what they were told about when, when, it, when it was erected in the days of Solomon. There's a greater than Solomon here. But God's going to have to have some people that are willing to be anointed. Anointed for the purpose of standing in his presence. Anointed for the purpose of living a heavenly life. To have their citizenship, their conversation, their life, their manner of living. Actually having their place of existence in a heavenly realm. Seated together with them in heavenly places. It's got to be more than just a shout in a song. It's got to be a lifestyle. A way that we live. A reality of how to step into it. How to engage in it because of what God has done for us in his grace. When he filled us with his Holy Spirit and baptized us in his holiness and a greater dimension than any rubbing that ever took place. And God describes the holy anointing oil. He says there can be no fashion of it. If anybody fashions anything that looks like it or smells like it, they'll should be, they'll be cut off. They're an abomination to me, says God. Huh? There's been more violations with his anointing. More violations with his holy things. These things are sacred to Father. And yet he's still so forgiving, just like Manasseh builds two altars to two gods. He makes images of demons, burns his children in the valley of Hinnon, from which we derive the word Gehenna, which is a concept of the lake of fire. Gehenna, the Hebrew language, Gehenna. The valley of Hinnon. He's so, sacri so des des desecrated. He's so desecrated, the father said, I'm not going back in. So he said, when Manasseh desecrated at that level, he said, I'm done, I'm out of it. There was therefore no offering that would bring God back in. There was no more Yom Kippur. See, when the, when, when the priest, there was different things. If a priest sinned, there was a different effect on the holies of holies than if a king sinned, and a different effect on the holies of holies than if a person, a person sinned, a ruler, and then if it was just a layman. Everybody had a different effect on the holies of holies. Or where, what altar had to be purified, what altar was actually contaminated by the sins of the people. The sins of the king and the sin of the priest contaminated the inner sanctum. He said, my glory would depart. 
as soon as, the, as soon as it's contaminated. And so Manasseh and other kings, especially Manasseh, contaminated the holiest of holies, the holiness of holinesses, what we call the Kadosh Kadoshim. He so, so contaminated it. Father said, I'm not coming back in. I'll destroy it, burn it. It will be absolutely renovated. I'm not coming back in. Oh, oh. But he was always saying, I will not put out the light. I will not put out the light. Thelio tried to put out the light. She tried to kill all, this, kill all the king's sons royal because you know, she was a relative of Jezebel. She tried to put out the light. But the father said, I'm not putting out the light for my sake, for the, my servant David's sake. I promised him. He, gave, he laid hold on me. I mean, I, mean I, I think that every one of us should have that desire that we should so lay hold on Father with our heart that there would be a testimony about our life that says, I tell you, he laid hold. She laid hold on me. It wasn't about their life. I mean, you, I don't care. Yes, you know, David opened up the door to sin and destruction through his sin with Bathsheba. And he lost two sons over it. He lost a daughter, went crazy over it. He lost a great upheaval in his house, great defilement of his house, and the sword did not depart from his house, but oh, how he walked in brokenness and humility before the Lord with everything that he did wrong. Watch him cast himself down before the presence of the Lord. There was no stubbornness. There was no hard-heartedness. There was no rebellion. There was no pride. There was no, you gotta listen to me. If there's anybody who could have shoved somebody out the door, if there was anybody who did not have to listen to the preacher, who could walk out the door and didn't have to listen to the preacher, it would have been King David, because he's king. <laughs> And we can see what many of the other kings did to, to prophets that came and told them what to do. They were either stoned, thrown into prison, fed the bread of affliction, and, wa and, 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 and water and the bread of affliction. You see what they did, huh? Yeah, that was about, that's about par for the course. Oh, that our hearts, oh, that we would, huh, Papa's already rent the heavens and come down. It's time for us to do some rending. Uh, we need to rend our hearts. We can rend the earth. And we can rend the heavens with a shout of praise. That not comes, it doesn't come out of, out of the realms of, of our human ability. It comes out of the realms of a desperation to know him, to love him. And then that's where the Holy Spirit causes us to mount up from the realm of human limitation, from the realm of the otherness, as it were, from the realm of, uh, of the inability to know and, and understand God. He causes us to mount up in that heart and that love and that passion and that desire to do the will of the Father, to see Father's kingdom come, to see the things that Father has purposed to be established in the earth. He causes us in that realm to mount up and then heaven's sound comes forth from my voice. Reality, all I'm doing is prophesying to you. It's interlaced with revelation, it's interlaced with doctrine and knowledge. Papa has this for everybody. But you're going to have to, you're going to have to change. Somebody said, we don't want to hear change. I was so blessed today by someone who responded to, to a radical scripture that I, in, in statements I made on Facebook. And, and I just was so amazed by it. I, I just had a response. I, said, I, I just told, I said to the guy, I said, I moved. When he said, listen, why should I try to go grab another scripture to try to overthrow the scripture that is here before me instead of humbling myself before the scripture and being corrected and being instructed and, or, or run the risk of somehow not being able to live in the precious presence of the one whom I love. I mean, I would just, and, and, as a preacher, but come on, man. I, I just had to say, look, there's very few people who have this heart towards God this day, in this day. People don't want to be corrected. They're defiant. They raised in rebellious Christian homes. That's what I said. They raised in rebellious Christian homes. And they've taken on that spirit. And it's been populated from one generation to the next. It's true. And then that contaminates the house. Because they don't want to be broken and repent. I'm telling you, be broken and repent. Because it ain't going to work out for you. Father's not changing his ways. I'm telling you right now. He, he, Father, is going, Father is uncompromising concerning those things which he demands. And I tell, you what he's more, I tell you what's more important than anything else. I tell you what's more. You listen to me? I'm going to tell you what's more important than anything else. Turn me up. Just not a rattle. What's more important to Father than anything else is to glorify the name of his only begotten son. He's more interested in Jesus than he is in me and you. And you better get that straight. You better get that straight. He's more interested in Jesus than you and me. 
He loves, he's honored him. He's given him a name above every other name. He's highly exalted him above everything. And praise God that he has. For he is worthy. He alone is worthy. He alone. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now. You know, it used to be who's worthy to even stand in his presence. And now I always hear who's worthy to have to go to hell. That's how it's all flipped around. Who's worthy of the judgments of God? I had somebody, I mean, I even had somebody post that on my Facebook today. Who's worthy? Who would ever be worthy to suffer the wrath of God? Anybody who sins and rebels. But people, you don't even get that. I'm asking, do you get it? I'm, I want to know that you get it. I want to know. Do you know that there's a place of relationship with the Lord where you can walk in a place where there is no condemnation? God isn't a condemnation preacher. He's not sin conscious. And he's not lopsided. But he's talked more about wrath and his anger than he has love and compassion. Go prove it to yourself. He's talked more about wrath and anger than he has about love and compassion. Wrath and anger against sin. You're listening to me now. He's not a condemnation preacher. <laughs> he's not lopsided. And he's not sin conscious. He's just other. He's just not having none of that mess. He belongs to another realm. This is hard for people to get. They want God to come down and walk in our midst. He said, no, no, no. Come up and live in mine. Hallelujah. And now speak out of heaven. This is what Paul was saying when he said, by the Spirit. That means turn it down. This is what Paul said when he, when he was moved by the Spirit. In Colossians 1.13, he said, having been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear Son. The, the Word of God uh, is very clear on what it means to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and be led by the Spirit. It is... A, that is a synonym for living in the heavenly realm. <laughs> I mean, the Lord even told Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 11. He said, obey me, do what I say, keep my charge. You'll have days of heaven upon the earth. Every great man of God has said throughout the ages to something to this effect. Heaven is Jesus and Jesus is mine, so I'm living in heaven today. People, we have to understand what's turned our hearts away. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I personally believe, and I don't believe this is self-serving, I believe that this church is a cut above. And I've got a witness on that by so many different people that this church has got a willingness. But I'm going to tell you right now, even, in the, even the church being a cut above, there being a willingness within the people's hearts in this place to go with God, there's still a lack of knowledge and understanding on how to do it. And there are things that have got to be changed. There's, it's got to be more than just a willingness and a responsiveness when there is a guest ministry here, you know, when things are just all exciting. There's got to be a willingness. There's got to be a consecration. There's got to be a laying down of your life, a sacrificing of the things around you, a denial of the self there at the place where nobody sees you because that's where God's going to form you. That's where God's going to ultimately, openly reward you because he desires truth in the inward parts. Father, Father, Father sees where we're at. He does, Father doesn't like these swing, pendulum swings. You're living over here, doing your own thing, and then try to swing the pendulum, come over here, and then to be totally yielded to the Holy Ghost when you get into the meeting. That stuff has got to be broken. This, these are his holy courts. You're standing, sitting on holy ground. A place that God, Christ Jesus, separated and sanctified for himself. His manifest presence is here because he's the one who started this church. He's the one who ordained this ministry. He, he, his manifest presence, his resident president, presence is here. He's got, a, he's got a divine purpose here. It's been spoken again and again and again and again. The divine purpose. I have a great passion on the inside of me that Papa put there. He put there because of his divine purpose that he has in the earth, not only for here, but for everywhere, all of his churches. How many people are willing to pay the price to move in it? There's not a lot of people that's willing to pay the price and stand up and blow the trumpet in Zion. There's not a lot of people that's willing to stand there in that place before, you know, where, before the armies of the Lord where God utters his voice. And, and, and he says, now execute judgment upon all the ungodly for their ungodly deeds which they've ungodly committed. Now declare and decree my judgments. 
and my statutes and my ordinances and do not withhold from speaking because of their anger against you or because of the hard looks of their face or because of their defiance. They say, oh, I wouldn't say it that way. What way would you say it? When the Lord says, depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. Huh? When the Lord says today, if, if, I, if, I, if a strange thing, a new thing that has never happened before doesn't take place, then I haven't spoken to you by the Lord, but that the earth should open up and that these men should fall directly down into the pit. Huh? How, how do you say, oh, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That's Jesus' ministry. Today, you know, a, a man of God called me up. He said, listen, man, he said, you know, and they just published in my book, I've got more enemies now than I ever had. I said, well, come on, man, give me a break. You don't go into the ministry to win a popularity contest. You don't go into the ministry to become popular. And as soon as you start speaking truth, it's going to get worse for you. You know that. Ha, 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 we all laugh, but we don't like it. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> we get a strange, a strain. it's a strained giggle. A real strained giggle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had the Lord tell me many times, what do you want? You want people to like you or do you want me or you want to do what I told you to do? You know, and I just I say, well, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Be nice if people like me too, but. <laughs> He said, well, if they say good things about you, then you're not like the prophets of old. And if they say good things about you, then you're not like me. Because they didn't say good things about me, nor did they say good things about the prophets of old. Ha <laughs> ha. La Brosa, that encourage you, right? But, but there's something bigger than that going on. There's something bigger than that going on. And each one of us need to understand our part because each one of us are going to be assaulted by the satanic power. There's the strategies of Satan are very effective in keeping people separated, divisive, argumentative, all the rest of the stuff that goes down. So each one of us have got to realize, wait a minute, what is my role and my part? How then do I present myself to the Lord Jesus Christ? How do I yield myself to the Holy Ghost so that I can be a part of the body of Christ? What then are the challenges that I'm going to have to face? What is that Satan is doing to try to stop my involvement? What is it that he's doing in general against the church? Can now I be willing to be stirred by the Holy Ghost to be a mighty man or a mighty woman, to be valiant in the things of the spirit to stand up with divine power and authority to stop Satan right where he's working now most people are just still dealing with the lust of the flesh and trying to get over you know something they want for themselves the lust of the eye to now step up into a realm of a bigger issue of dealing with God's causes and dealing with the real you know strategies of Satan it's, it's time that we no longer are ignorant to Satan's devices it's time we graduate from tr deciding whether or not we're going to walk with God in a consecrated life or whether we're still back and forth between the Lord and the world because we still like the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and, and the pride of life and we're just halting between two opinions and as long as we're there as long as we're staggering, we're like drunken men. We can't be effective at anything. It's time to be promoted into a realm that says, I've, I've laid the foundation of repentance from dead works. I'm moving on with the Lord. I'm going to become a part of Father's business, functioning in the authority of sonship, now to deal with those things that are trying to stop the advancement of the kingdom of God. Because souls are not going to be saved. There's not going to be a mighty wind of the Holy Ghost blowing to the land unless there's churches, a church consecrated to him. And that's far more than singing songs. And that has that's gotta be bigger and more important than anything else. Prayer's gotta become more important to you than anything else. You know, it's like Keith Green said, God's people can't even get out of bed to get on church, get a church on time. I mean, it's like the Lord just had to take Keith Green out. He was causing too much trouble. Huh? It was good trouble. Though. Jesus rose from the dead. One of his songs that Jesus rose from the dead and God's people can't even get out of bed. You know, to hear him preach, to just hear him slam his hands down on, on the piano and say, it's time that the church repents because you people don't know anything about the presence of his holiness. I mean, to remember those, those moments in time where God has prophets that he raises up who cannot tolerate the condition of the church. 
and everybody just sits there and ducks. Oh, it's time that everybody goes, yeah, bring it. This is true. Lord, forgive me. Lord, change me. I'm ready to go all the way with you. Lord, let these bounds and let these limits and let these chains no longer restrain me. Oh, to allow the, to allow the floodlight of heaven to examine your soul. So many people run and hide behind the bush and try to hide their transgression, even as Adam did. When the light begins to shine, when Father comes moving according to the spirit of the day, the purpose of the day, people run, run and hide and say, I cannot bear to hear. I can't bear to be told that I'm wrong. You wrong then. <laughs> because Father chastens every person, every son that he receives. And there's a whole lot of corrections got to come down for you and me. And if you don't want to be told you're wrong, your heart's wrong. Your life's messed up because there's nothing but a bunch of correction around here. There's nothing but a bunch of rebuking, instruction, correction. That's what God said to do. My goodness, if we, you and I have been given the privilege to step into all of the realms of his glory, to be taught and instructed in all of his ways, to be fortified against everything that Satan can do, demon spirits and angels of darkness. My, there's a lot of instructions got to go down. A lot of corrections got to go down. A lot of coaching, a lot of rebuking. Now let's do this thing again. Now let's do this thing again. You know, hey, Father's so long suffering. Holy Spirit is so patient. He, you know, I just want to learn how to be as patient as He is. To just say it again, and to say it again, and a thousandth time, and in cases, ten thousandth time, as He pleads, as He pleads, He pleads with men. You know, the Lord gave us a song, an interpretation of a song the other night, Sunday night. It has just been burning in me, man. It's just, whew. Well, as we began to sing, he's high and lifted up. He's there in the beauty of his love, pleading with the people. And his train fills the temple. Dear Father, and all the things that you hear him say, I mean... Well, it's a great transition when you begin to read the Word of God because you want to know the heart of the Father. You want to know what He's like. You want to understand what, why He judges the way He judges, feels the way He feels, moves the way He moves. I mean, when Father unfolds Himself and reveals Himself, He reveals Himself as this tender, loving, merciful child, as it were. This is who I am. <laughs> I'm merciful, full of loving kindness, <laughs> you know. And tender mercies. Uh, but it, the reality of it is, he's holiness of holinesses. <laughs> he's totally, the world is foreign to him, and he's foreign to the world. He's as isolated and as separated from it as he was on Mount Sinai when bounds were set. As he was in the holies of holies in the temple that was there, erected in the wilderness and then established in Jerusalem under the, under the reign of Solomon. He's here today. He's pleading the same way. He's not pleading any, diff any differently. He's pleading the same way as he was in Genesis chapter 3. He's pleading just the same way as he was with, with the kings of, of Israel, with, his, with the sons of Jacob. <laughs> and now it says that there's more at stake. <laughs> When people will no longer listen to the judgments of God, when they do not want to tolerate the reality that, that damnation is eternal. That the, the flame will never go out. The fire is eternal. That e destruction is eternal. That the judgments of God are set. They will not be altered. They cannot be compromised. And people will not tolerate that right now. And it is, the, it is the clearest indication of apostasy more than any other sign. If there's ever a time that there's got to be a people of God who knows how to take a hold of the power of God. If there's ever a time that people need to repent and get right. There are those in this meeting here tonight. You violated things in the spirit and you're still not right because I can feel it. You're still not right. And you're going to have to, and you could, as far as I'm concerned, everybody can say, Lord, is it me? 
Huh? You can rend your heart. I know a place of prayer and interaction with God to where that I walk out of there confident and assured and comforted by the Holy Ghost and established. Hallelujah. I don't have to try to soothe my own conscience, you know. You can soothe your own conscience, but the Holy Ghost is still grieved. Are you with me? People can soothe their own conscience, but the Holy Ghost is still grieved. You need a seer. Yes. You need a prophet. Yes. You need someone who knows the ways of the Spirit of the living God, who's consecrated to that realm, who senses what he senses, rather than just navigating on your own blindly without a compass. Because I'm telling you right now, strategies of Satan are like this. He will be able to deceive even the elect if the days weren't sorting. That's how powerful he is. That's how ruinous the, the, his tricks and his lies are. I'm telling you right now, I'm asking for the fire of God to fall on me in a greater way. To burn in my home, in my family in a greater way. I'm asking the fire of God to burn in here much more power. I'm looking for some boiling them boiling and what happens when it boils the scum rises to the top uh, that's what the pot says that's what the father says concerning the pot read it Ezekiel that's what father said concerning the pot so I'm gonna stir the pot hallelujah come on now so everybody in here be already going bring it you should father I want your judgments I, I want your word I want your life and listen Listen, if you're chasing the Lord, you're judging the Lord that you'd not be condemned with the world. So many people don't want to be chasing the Lord. They don't want to listen to instruction. I guarantee you, when you do not want to be chasing, you will be condemned. You listen to me. I'm speaking to you right out of heaven. Somebody said, you sound like a screaming father in the house. No, I am a screaming preacher in the house. And there needs to be screaming fathers People can't tolerate it. It's the days of apostasy. They can't tolerate it because the rebellion is too thick. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, but it's okay because everything I'm saying is said in love. Everything I'm saying is said first and foremost in love for him. Because I'm going to just tell you the truth. I love him more than I love you. Okay? I'm going to tell you the truth. I love my wife very dearly, but I love Jesus far more than I love my wife. And I believe the same of her, that she loves the Lord more than then she loves me. Huh? I'm not going to hell for her. And I don't expect her to go to hell for me. Huh? I'm, not going to, I'm not going to walk away from complete and total consecration and obedience to the Lord for her. You listen to me? If I'm not doing it for her, I'm not doing it for you. Are you listening to me? You can, you can pull on me whatever way you want to pull. You can, you, can, you can say whatever you want to say. You can believe whatever you want to believe. I'm staying right here with the anointing that I've received from heaven. All I can say is, if you don't agree, go get your censor. Go get your censor. Come burn. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Father, I haven't changed. Go get your censor. Come stand here and say, Lord, judge between me and thee. That's really, because it's got to come down to that. It's got to come down to that. And if it actually exists in this small population of a community, where the word of God has been constantly poured out, and the spirit of God is constantly poured out, what does it look like in these in these churches where there's thousands and tens of thousands, where there's been really no getting in people's face and holding them responsible and saying, wait a minute, you can't have that stuff going on in your life. It's an offense to God. Or to really get into people's lives and say, listen, as soon as I put my finger on somebody that says, they'll say, you can't tell me that. You can't talk that way to me. You have no right, quote unquote, to judge me. Oh yeah, I do. You need to read your Bible. I'm a judge in the house. God's servants are supposed to be judges in the house, and if they don't judge according to his judgment, they have a greater condemnation. That's what he says. I, I, I'm praying tonight that I'm touching your heart with a hunger to understand your responsibility to the Lord. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, I hit the, I, I got a, first thing Monday morning, I begin to intercede for everybody who had to get up at 5.30 to go to work. Oh, Lord, strengthen them because there's no way I could shut down earlier. Lord, I did what you told me to do. Huh? So I'm telling you, I'm praying for you. We're not just, you know, look, we, we, we on this thing. We in, we in some place together here. Amen. It's time. It's time that the reproach be taken away from off the, off the name of Jesus. It's time people stop trampling underfoot the blood of Jesus Christ. It's time that people stop walking all over the holy things of God and acting like the church belongs to them. Church belongs to Jesus. 
He purchased it with his own blood. He loves the church so much he laid down his life for it. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. And I'm going to ask you, how much do you love the church? Because your heart's supposed to be united with his heart to have the same feeling, the same adoration. He laid down his, I mean, when you begin to see how he takes care of his church, go look at how he moved the people of God to take care of the, of the tabernacle in the wilderness. So look how he moved the people of God. I mean, he even stirred up the kings of Babylon and of Media, Media and Persia and, and, and the kings of the profane kings of the earth to come and bring offerings so that the, ha the house could be rebuilt properly. Come on. Hey, come on, think about it. Hey, that, I mean, just look at how good he takes care of you. Look at it, everything, my, the administration of it. You didn't set out, if you were placed in a course, in a position before God to minister in the temple, you, there was no excuses for being late. There was no excuses for not being there. It was, it was a holy responsibility where there was no latitude. <laughs> That's how Father feels about his house. <laughs> There's a lot to learn by looking at the Old Testament about the administration of the church, about the consecration. There's very few faithful people. There's very few faithful men and women when it comes to the, comes to the terminology of faithfulness to the Holy Ghost, faithfulness to the Holy Spirit. Faithfulness to the body of Christ. I'm talking about the church that is in heaven. I'm talking about a heavenly realm, not an earthly realm that people have confined things to be, which is basically almost a glorified, you know, social club, country club, gatherings of people where everybody gets to put in their two cents of what they think it ought to be and what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Such does not exist in God's kingdom. Not if you're going to be counted worthy to be put into the, to this place of functioning in his divine grace and anointing. Listen, it's a sacred realm. Come on now. I want you to feel it. I want you to take on a personal responsibility. Papa's house, Papa's stuff, Papa's things. I want you to understand that your reactions, that your actions impact that. The Lord so loved the church, he gave himself for it. That he might present the church unto himself without spot or blemish, or any kind of wrinkle. Well polished, decked out, beautiful, every hair in place kind of, wow. Huh? Huh? I mean, I, I, I love the marriages, doing weddings just for that, just to look at the bride, look at her. She's, look at how she is so well prepared for the groom. Come on. She's got her, I mean, I've, I've never seen women look so beautiful as they do on their wedding day. And Father has purposed us and purchased us to look like that, to be a glorious church. You've got to take up personal responsibility. I mean, Papa was just pleading. He's pleading. He's pleading. It, it's, there's very few people who can hear his voice. He's pleading. He, he's petitioning. He, he, this is the only solution. This is the only remedy. For, for a, a lost and dying world, the souls of men weigh in the balance. Their ultimate fate is eternal punishment and eternal fire and eternal destruction and eternal damnation because you and I can't get over ourselves. Enough to step into the splendor and the majesty of his glory where he wants to clothe us and where he wants to beautify us with his presence and his meekness. The Lord says, seek righteousness. Seek meekness so you'll be hid when my wrath comes upon the earth. <laughs> hid in him. <laughs> I mean, God, is, God hasn't changed. He said, seek first the kingdom. Seek his righteousness. For Jesus says, come learn of me. Come learn of my loneliness and my meekness. We want to hook up with him and in the church, but we don't want to hook up with him in the disposition of his nature in the realms of the spirit. <laughs> so thus, we can't hook up with him in his church. Because unless you're united with his nature and with his spirit, you can never be under his command. Because he's not going to be doing anything but meekness and lowliness. He's not going to be doing anything other than the will of the Father. I'm not come to do my own will. Tonight, Jesus has not come to do his own will. Tonight, he's not, the Holy Ghost has not come to glorify anyone but Jesus. Tonight, 
all that ultimately finds its place in expression in glorifying the Father and doing the will of the Father who's pleading for men, his cause for men. Now, no sickness is supposed to be on anybody. I ran that off on Sunday. Toxia to Kodaya. Now, in Jesus' name. This thing can't get on you. Orasta esete kea. Mokatana eshipitolo. Purapa. Purasea taya. Mokatana dea. Mokatana dea. Asitea su. In Jesus' name. Ha ha. Hurreve kushate. Toravaha. People, I, I, here's one of the things that I pray and ask God that you'll be able to begin to feel and understand. That you'll be able to get, begin to feel and understand Satan's violence against the church of Jesus Christ. I, I pray that you'll be able, people just want to be on vacation, you know, want to be on a honeymoon, and you know, don't want to have to do any work. But I pray that you're willing to start getting into the job and that you'll begin to feel the things that Satan does to try to stop the realms of the anointing. That you would then, in that place, begin to stir yourself. and <laughs> You begin to rise up in the authority of God to say, you not, hey, listen, you're not doing that anymore. And the vain, b- b- bottom line of it is, the main thing is you're going to say, Satan, you're not using me anymore. You're not influencing me anymore. I got the big picture now. I'm not lost in the woods. <laughs> You get lost in the woods, you know, the best thing to do is climb a very high tree if, if there's not a mountain. If there's a mountain, just stop whatever you're doing. Walk to the mountain, get up on top of the mountain. Then climb a high tree, if, especially if it's the dense forest. And get yourself, look where you're at. Huh? Get a landscape of things. Because otherwise, you're going to spin around in a circle all the rest of whatever, the, the remainder of your life, which won't be long. <laughs> you're listening to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> If you're lost, you need to retrace your steps. Huh? And come back here to this place of submission and surrender to God. Listen, folks, we live in perilous times. We live in days of crisis. What happened? What happened when God removed the fear of Israel from off the hearts of men? Even the Edomites came up and spoiled them. Even the weakest of nations came in and ran right over top of them because the fear, of the, uh, the fear that God had placed upon the nations for Israel was no longer there. It's happening right now. North Korea has no fear of America. Iran, no fear of America. Iraq, ISIL, you name Little nobodies, no fear. How about other big enemies? China. China's, got a, China's been saying since the year, uh, since, all, was, well, first time that America, the Western people heard it was probably 2002, that their mandate in 2020 was to ultimately take over the world economically and then militarily. You don't think that they got a mission? You don't think China's got a mission? China's got a mission. I am very close friends, intimate friends, with leaders in the, in the People's Republic of China. The Lord allowed my wife and I actually to go and minister to the Watchman Nee group in Mao Zedong's private resort. I'm going to tell you right now, China is on a mission. You think they're afraid of America? They're not afraid of America. You think Russia is afraid of America? It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And do we see it burnt? We see the indication of it everywhere. The only remedy of it is for the church. The only remedy for all this is the church to rise up in power and glory. Huh? You know what happened during the Bolshevik Revolution? You know what happened? Did you know that the, Russia actually carried a, a mandate of, of, of taking the gospel to the nations of the earth? Did you know that? Did you know that Mother Russia, as, as she was called, was on fire with the glory of heaven? There was great prophets and signs and wonders and miracles taking place. And then about the time the Bolshevik Revolution was going on, the churches were so divided, they were arguing one another and fighting over their vestment that they should proper vestments to wear when preaching. They lost the glory, they lost the anointing, and before long they lost everything. And they were in Siberia. And they were in other concentration camps. And their life was coming to end. And the whole thing was turned upside down. And churches were burned and demolished. And a a, a power tried to erase the name of Jesus from off a great nation. And people, America is so full of pride and acts like that, that, that you, here we sit, you know, 
and nothing could pull us down. We live forever. <laughs> Can't look at the history. And the only remedy is the church. I'm just trying to push you on every level I can here tonight. I'm going to try to get you to a place where you'll say, wait a minute. I've got to become a part of the Holy Ghost. I've got to become a part of the church. I've got to begin to move in a realm where God is first and foremost in my life. And there's plenty of evidence and proofs for it that I've laid down my life for the gospel. I'm not just giving God a little bit of my time when it's convenient for me. I've laid down my life. I've taken up my cross. I'm following him. Divine purposes are my purpose. A heavenly vision is why I live. Oh, God. It doesn't take many. 120, approximately 120. Turn the world upside down. When you, disappear, when you come to a place where everybody just, everybody's confident towards God and a passion huh, towards him of participating with what it is he wants to do. And you don't want to do anything else. You're done. You're done with everything else. Peter went on his last fishing trip. Are you with me? That was it. Children, have you any meat? That was the last fishing trip between the resurrection and Pentecost. <laughs> From that day forward. Oh, he got himself in so much trouble that they crucified him, hanging him upside down. Let the church rise again. The church will rise. The church will rise, but unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be in great tribulation and great persecution. I, I had hoped, I, would, I had hoped that there would have been men and women of God who could have been stirred to grab a hold of God and turn this thing but it looks like it's, it's past. It looks like, you know, it looks like we already crossed, went to the crossroads and we've gone past the crossroads. But the, the only thing that could possibly, the only possible thing that could turn this back, the only thing that could possibly turn the tide is where all of a sudden there begins to be a people who count the things of the kingdom more important than their own life, who begin to believe in the power of prayer, begin to petition heaven. Begin to cry out to God that his glory and that the power of his presence and that his will and his, and his purposes would be done in our life. And you, as you're praying, you're the first candidate to fully submit to his kingdom. The Lord is, the Lord is just saying this. He's, you know, he's saying, come under my rule. People want to call Jesus Lord, but they don't want to call him ruler. <laughs> he's a ruler. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He's absolute sovereign ruler. Ruler. Hallelujah. Prosataya. He tested Tornaya. Bukusifitia. And he's raised up people to speak on his behalf in the earth today. I'm one of those people. And, I, I'm, and I'm just earnest and hungry to be used by Father in a greater way in the United States of America. And I'm earnest and... I, to be used by the Lord in a greater way in your, own, in your lives, in this place. I can't make you do anything. I can scream and holler loud, though. I can plead with you and not keep silent. Father won't make us do anything. Huh? He pleads with us, though. He pleads. Father's pleading with the earth today. He's pleading with men today. I recently told a friend, said, listen, make sure that you're always saying to the Lord, Father, I want what you want. I want to be where you're at. Don't start praying selfishly. Because if you do, Father just might send you a bunch of quail. Bring fatness to your body, but leanness to your soul. It's amazing sometimes how that the Lord will answer prayers that are not righteous prayers. They're not prayers according to his will. The pleadings of his people saying this is what we want and we want it now. People don't understand how loving Father is, how merciful he is, how good he is, how kind he is, how gentle he is. He's the greatest in the kingdom. He's servant of all. Jesus comes and when he finds us waiting on him and being his servants, 
he causes us to sit down at the table and won't let us get up and, and serve ourselves. He causes us to sit down and wait at the table. I, I, I have to outrun my wife. If, I, if there's something I notice that, that I want or that's not there, if I get up, she's trying to predict me what it is. Like, is, is, what, what is it? Because she wants to take care of me and wait on me hand and foot. That's Jesus. That's what he's going to come and do. How humbling is that? How humbling is that? Can we turn it around? Will we wait on him hand and foot? He said, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. Father even. Father. Father. Father has a relationship with a man like Samuel and says he doesn't let one of his words fall to the ground. Huh? So Samuel said this, Samuel in his judgments, in his righteous judgments, and he was a righteous man before the Lord. If he said something, Father upheld it. Father, can we turn it around and say, Father, whatever you ask, I'll do it. Can we, can we, can we go ahead and, and look at his word and hear him asking? Huh. Can we see what's really in his heart? Can I see Papa's heart? Can I see Father's heart? Can I see the one who died for me? Can I see his heart? Can I be devoted to participating with it? Do it. You understand what, I'm, what, my, what my passion is. Huh. Begin to say, look, you know, he created me for his praise, and this is the way I'm going to live from now on. I'm not going to live for the complaint. I'm not going to live to do my own thing. I'm not going to say, well, there was dishes to do, laundry to do, yards to mow, jobs to complete, on and on. I'm going to live for the praise. He created me for his praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to live for his praise. I'm going to give myself to redeeming the time for the days are evil. I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to myself in Psalm and hymn, spiritual song, giving thanks. That's what God created me for. I'm going to give myself to seeking first the kingdom. I'm going to quit playing for 10. Listen, people, I want to break you free from your unholy influences, from your unrighteous influences. Huh? Everything about, I'm just helping you understand this. Everything about your life needs to change. You got that? Now, that should be a good starting place. Huh? Now everybody's kind of got to go know where to start. You don't think, well, I got four or five things I want to hang on to. No, nothing. Nothing. Toktika, takstpek, mast, ekstra, poltoni, erastipita, erastapa. Because I can feel the stubbornness. I can feel it. It's in the atmosphere. I can feel the stubbornness. I can feel the res resistance. You got to rise up and recognize it. And you yourself have got to say no to the thing. Say, no, I'm no longer going to yield my members as a weapon of unrighteousness. I want to read this to you, and we're going to close, okay? I want you to see the impact. I want you to see the impact of your choices. I want you to see the impact of your decisions. Because the impact of your choices and decisions are going to be extremely influential of what you do and how you do it of what part and role you play in the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul says in Romans chapter 6, and I'm going to just go ahead and start here in verse 11. He says, Likewise, wrecking you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. Neither yield ye your members as weapons, of unrighteous, uh, neither yield ye your members as weapons of unrighteousness unto sin. I want you to grab a hold of that. Somebody say, well, my Bible says instruments. The word, the Greek word is literally weapons. It's the same word used in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the weapons of our warfare. Same word, same word. It's weapons. It's weapons of war. It's not any other kind of instruments. It's not, you know, horns that you blow or, you know, drums that you beat. Don't yield your members, your, you, your decisions, the things that you do, the things that you allow, the things that you give place to can ultimately result in your actually being a weapon of unrighteousness. Again, violating, working contrary against, fighting against the kingdom of God, fighting against the church. Hear me. Hear me. Listen to me. Mm. So many have fought against the kingdom of God and not known it. 
So many have raised up a hand of sedition against the kingdom of God in the name of the Lord and did not realize that they themselves were actually fighting, doing violence against the Lord of hosts. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. The influences. Somebody said, well, I'm, I'm not, I don't do adultery. I don't do uncleanness. Yeah, but do you do strife? Yeah, but do you do division? Yeah, but do you do things that are just about living for yourself? And all, all that realm that ultimately accumulates around those things? Huh? Are you under the, are you under the rule? Because if you're not under the rule, ultimately it's because there's some rebellion. And I don't think that there's any other greater weapon of unrighteousness against the kingdom of God other than rebellion and defiance. The Lord, when, when the prophets of old said, Father, arise, arise and fight against and destroy Rahab. Literally, Rahab means defiance. Lord, you're the one who in past generations rose up and you're the one who, who slew defiance. I don't want to be there. <laughs> you're the one who wounded the head of the dragon. The one who is the reproacher, the slanderer, the condemner. I mean, if we just recognize we're called for his praise, we're created for his praise, and we understand how he feels about murmuring and complaining and unthankfulness that we can begin to understand, wait a minute. We can begin to understand how God feels about faithfulness and he demands that that be formed in all of his children's life and we then begin to reckon with what unfaithfulness looks like in the church. Unfaithfulness first and foremost to the Holy Spirit because you're not willing to yield to him. You're not willing to be continually filled. Unfaithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ on several different levels. Unfaithfulness to his church. Look, it's just things that you've got to understand. That's where the attack is happening. That's If you've grown up enough to mature above, just constantly being moved continually by the winds of, 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 of Satan's lust, if you've grown up just a little bit, that's where the battle is. He says... But yield yourself unto God, hallelujah, as those that are alive from the dead, <laughs> and your members as weapons of righteousness unto God. For sin shall have no dominion over you. And I, I want you to, I wanted to say this. I want you to understand this. This idea, this sin, just because the word is harmatia, is, is a concept of missing the mark. There's no way, man. It's far worse than that. It's not just missing the mark. It's an act of treason against the Father. It's, it's participating with those things that literally stop the movings of God, the advancements of his kingdom, and the purposes of Father's will being done in the earth. It's an act of treason. Moving past that, I want, you, I want you to hear what the Spirit of the Lord's crying out saying. He's saying he wants his Spirit, his Holy Spirit, to baptize you. He's poured out his presence upon you. He wants to fill you continually to overflowing with every good thing. He wants you to yield yourself to him. He wants you to come to a place in him to where those things that he wants are the things that you want. That his vision is your vision. That there's not two different visions. That his purpose is your purpose. You can sit down and you can read about what he wants the church to look like. The kind of church he's coming from. You can sit down and read about what the church is supposed to look like. So that sinners can be converted. You can sit down and read about his glorious church. And what it's supposed to look like. And how it ultimately is able to look like that. And then you can decide whether or not you are going to give yourself over to participating with the righteous cause of the living God. I want you to begin to deal with reality. Because you live in a culture and a society that is imposed upon you. All that you need to be thinking about is your house, your car, your stuff, your needs. 
Huh? Jesus said it won't work if you do it. What I got for you won't work that way. You can't give any thought to what you shall eat. Because if you do, it's going to spoil you and ruin you. Because your mind's going to play tricks on you. You're going to be that much more exposed to the tricks and lies of Satan. You can't take thought for what you can wear. As he says, he says, you just set your heart on the kingdom. I'll take thought for you. You set your heart on just obeying me. Look at Solomon, how glorious he was. I'm telling you, I take it to another level. Let me, let me look at, look at the, the grass of the field. Look at how I clothe them. I'm the one who designed every flower. I'm the one who, ma- I'm the one who clothes it, and it's just there for a little season, just for a couple of months, and then it's withered and it's gone. But I spend all that time in great detail. God's not a deist. He's actually making the green grass come up every time it comes up. The flower blooms every time because he actually causes it. His spirit moves upon it and life is produced amen Amen. father just takes a little walk and the green grass starts coming up all over the place beautiful flowers start growing just takes a little walk hallelujah hallelujah he said and I'll take God do better for you I'll give all these things I'll add all these things to you if you'll set your heart on my purpose if you'll make those things, if you'll, if you'll set your heart on my house, David said, I'll set, I'm going to build your house. You know what the Lord said? David, because you set your heart to build me a house, I'm going to build you a house. Hey, I'm going to ask you, will you set your heart to build Father a house? Do you know what that looks like? Do you know what that means? Will you begin to deal with it? Will you begin to deal with reality? Will you? We begin to just, I mean, it's so blessed that you're reading the Word of God. Just so blessed that you set, you know, a 90-day pace, which is so little. But you can do it really in 45 minutes in a day and read the Bible in 90 days. And I pray that you, I pray that you get, fall so in love with it, you begin to feel such a flow of the presence of God in your life that you set up, you just pick up the pace, you know, go, wait a minute, you know. Huh? Hallelujah. I, 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 you know, the, the reality of it is, I, I, was, I was privileged, and, and, and I don't want you to get too jealous of me, but I was privileged to be able to spend about eight hours, nine hours today in the Word. And I'm telling you, there's something, nothing so wonderful and so beautiful as that privilege to be able to do that, to just spend my life there in the Word. I was, I was translating a very difficult part of, uh, of, of the book of Acts. It's, it's a little bit on the slow side and very difficult words in Acts 22. Begin verse 12. You know, but even, even, the, even, the, more difficult, even the more difficult challenges, I mean, just leaves you just so refreshed, so blessed. Huh. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to come to find a place of flowing in the Holy Ghost, walking with the Master. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray, I pray tonight that you hear the Spirit of the Lord talking to you. You feel better? Hallelujah. Anybody else sick? I ran sickness and disease off on Sunday night. And you guys are so blessed. Because... You would have been like gripped with stomach flu or something else going on. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody hooked up. Man, you just got tokalina. Haravashiprona. Delivered from the pain of an affliction of viruses. And I mean, that's the best way to go. Just not even get in them. It's easier to have faith not to get sick than it is to have faith to get healed after you are sick. It really is. It's might as well just go ahead and start moving in that faith not to be sick, to live in divine health. I can show you how to do it. Would you like to know? Be continually filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let the rivers of God flow. And then those things that would try to affix itself to you, those things that would try to attach itself to your body or to your, to your soul, your life, or your spirit, they'll just get washed away. They, that thing would get, the thing would get broken. Father has truly given us an abundant life. He's the only one who has it. doesn't belong anywhere else. We want you to enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it, there's going to be no witness of it in the earth. If you don't have it, there's going to be no place for it to be demonstrated. 
You're it. We're it. If we don't do it, there is no light. If we're not it, there is no salt. And if the salt has lost its saltiness, if it doesn't make people thirsty, and we're supposed to be making people thirsty for the kingdom of God, for the presence of the Lord, then it's henceforth good for nothing. Oh, come on. By the help and the grace of the living God, I commission you, I, I, I command you in Jesus' name that as much as you begin to read the word in a measurable way, that you'll begin to give yourself to praise and thanksgiving. You'll begin to dedicate yourself to saying, wait a minute, I was created for praise. I was created to give him praise. I was created for his praise. I'm his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus on the good works. He called me out of darkness into his marvelous light so that I might show forth the, his praises. I pray in Jesus' name that you'll just do this, that you'll understand that there is a remedy. The remedy right now, the remedy is for you and I to be filled with the Spirit. To be filled. 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 Filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to God. Filled. Filled with His joy and His peace. Filled with His love. Filled with His grace. Father, we thank You right now in Jesus' name. Father, we look to You right now. That you would cause each one of us to understand that when we're lacking the overwhelming flood of love, all we have to do is yield to you. That when we're lacking in any dimension of joy unspeakable and full of glory, all we have to do is look to you and yield to you. And you'll cause it to break forth out of our being like water breaking forth. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that here in this place there will be a group of people who will come to understand the responsibility that we have in you to be your manifest presence in the earth, your body, your church, those who are united and joined unto you to move under your direction, to move under your action, to come under the, the complete command and rulership and control of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray that every person in this place We'll just be crying out for a baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. That, that every person in this place will give themselves to relationship with you, Lord, where your spirit comes upon them and they prophesy. Where the anointing of the Holy Ghost flows out of them and the sweet melodies of heaven and sounds of your divine power are heard in their mouth and in their voice. Hallelujah. Before, I, before we close tonight, I want to give anybody an opportunity that is in this place that if you're not right with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't feel that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, if you're not certain, certain where you stand, I want you to come because God wants to make you certain. I want to give everybody in this place tonight an opportunity. If you've got a problem with perpetual backsliding, if you've got a problem constantly with being overcome with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, and you want to understand how to walk with Father so that you can be strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to stand against all the powers of Satan, I want you to come because we're here to pray for you and with you. I'm telling you, the anointing has been given to us that we've received from Him teaches us to dwell in him and that dwelling in him is all about living in the place called the holies of holies the anointing that was given to us ha. ultimately all it does is empower us and equip us to live in a realm called holiness the realm called his presence oneness the place where he dwells why don't you come if you're sick in your body you can play if you're sick in your body, then we want to we want to pray with you and for you. Anybody sick in pain, disease, problems? Just come and let the Lord heal you. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and play a melody. 
Can't hear you. Hallelujah. I only hear one string. The E string is all we hear. Yeah. Play something else. Hallelujah. 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 There's no reason that anyone standing up here shouldn't get everything that you that you're asking the Lord. Katrina, what you asking the Lord for? <laughs> Let me just tell you something. Rebuking doesn't do a whole lot of good. But let me tell you what does do a lot of good. You ready? Yielding to the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come here. Are you good? How are you doing now? <laughs> What's happening with you? Yeah, but how about this torment in your spirit? Why don't you lift your hands towards heaven? We're going to get rid of the torment in your spirit. It's about time, isn't it? Here, come back up here. I don't want you to be oppressed and sad and sorrowful and weighed down and heavy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we thank you that you gave us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You made us trees of righteousness. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be transformed in Jesus' name. Every stronghold of religion and every stronghold of this world, I'm breaking off you now. That'll help your body. Hallelujah. Taco to say. Taco. What's up? <laughs> I know you do. That's every bit. Everything you just said is absolutely true. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, do this work right now, Lord. <laughs> do this work right now, Father, for Brittany, your daughter, Brittany. Brittany of the Holy Ghost. Brittany of the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you for mighty signs and wonders. I thank you for a freedom in you, Lord, to be bold. And confident and full of divine assurance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the ability to sing without any kind of throat problems. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Father, I just thank you for making a determined, Holy Ghost filled woman right here. A woman of the Spirit. Knows how to flow in prophecy and knows how to flow in, in, in tongues, interpretation, and, and speak by the Spirit. And I thank you, Father, for this work of grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Ha. 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 Zuzurababaya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that whoever you lay hands on, Jesus' name, power of God touches them. And that you co you have confidence. The power of God will touch them when you lay hands on them. Amen. Hallelujah. What's up? So, what are you, what are you asking? Could you turn this up? Okay. Father, we pray right now, send your word into 
Jeremy's house. Touch tears. Uh, command the fever to go. In Jesus' name. Lazo de Isaiah. La doza Lazaya. Bongale Asai. Begola Sayanea. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lo Saya. Hallelujah. Le Ripai. Le Ripai so tonight. Le Ripai so tonight. Kota Mange Osea. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's up? Huh? Well, in the name of Jesus, no red dia, in Jesus' name, strengthened by the Spirit. Strengthened by the Spirit. Now, in Jesus' name, in, come here. I command you to be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. That every power of the enemy would have no uh, rights or, or claims to affect you or touch you in Jesus' name ever again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In a masatero. In a masatero paya. In a masatero paya. Liko shidara neo. Lire manjes. Bodanaya. Right out of your belly. Flows rivers of the Holy Ghost. Right now. The flow of heaven. Right through your life. Right through you. Right through you. The flow of the spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit. The spirit of holiness. Flows right through you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, huh. in Jesus' name, <laughs> do to say, huh. Huh. holiness unto the Lord, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of, praise the name of Jesus. He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Zagilaya. Mumbrusaya. Mumbruseradeo. Mangjakatoya. Mumbruverbi vishishi. Mananea jusine. Mando. Mananea sepoto. Now, what is it that you want? Huh? What's wrong with you? You in pain? You hurt him? I command you not to be in pain anymore. In Jesus' name. Pain goes out of your body. Sutrini. <laughs> Melena, what do you want? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What's up? What's up? Huh? What's up? What? What? Huh? Miracle provision for what? Finances. No, it don't work that way. Let me tell you how it works. Let me tell you how it works. It doesn't work that way. It's miracle provision for increase in the anointing. And then where there's ever an increase in the anointing, then there's an increase in financial provision. See, financial provision. I, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, you see. Huh? Does it say, I wish above all things that uh, after that you've prospered, and after that you are, you know, in health, that then your soul prospers. No, I wish above all things that prosperity, financial means, and prosperity of a healthy body results in direct proportion to, the re to your prosperity of the spiritual state of your life. The soul. Huh? Okay. Okay. So I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. Amen. So I, I proclaim soul prosperity upon you right now in Jesus' name. Increase. 
increase. <laughs> increase with the increase of God. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and that, and then, then, yeah. And then you know what happens? You know what happens? In the dynamics of relationship, the gift of faith explodes. Faith works right with relationship. Isn't that beautiful? It is true. Comes right out of relationship. Faith comes right out of relationship. Just like trust comes right out of relationship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I ask you for your blessing here. In Jesus' mighty name. What's happening down here? What is up? What's up? What's wrong? Pastor, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put my things first and I'll save say for church. I'm sorry. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for such radical change in Bill's life. I thank you, Father, for such a submission and consecration to you that all the things that you described in your word begins to explode in this life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. All God's, look, it doesn't take much to mature in the house of God and see the power of God explode in the midst of the Pentecostal movement as it did in times in the past. People went from just not even walking with God, not even knowing God, to, as it were, all overnight becoming spiritual giants and great leaders in the Pentecostal movement because they gave it all, they surrendered it all. They bought one-way tickets to heaven and didn't come back. We're just, we're, I'm praying for you to step in. I'm praying for the people in this place to step into the Pentecostal movement, yeah. to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's up? You know what the Lord says? You know what the Lord says? He says, come out from among them, be separate. You have to be very careful about the continual, ongoing interaction with people who don't know the Lord, who don't want to walk with the Lord. You got to be careful of going into those environments. Huh? 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 <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord loves you. He's never going to stop loving you. He's got mercy, and he's never going to stop showing the mercy as long as you stay broken before him. But there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a faster route to glory. Okay? <laughs> there's a faster route to glory, and it's called wisdom. Huh? It's just wisdom. It's just wisdom. Huh? It's just wisdom. It's just wisdom. It's just real basic wisdom. Even like on down to almost even to the level of don't spit in the wind. It's just basic. It really is basic, basic wisdom. You know. There's just, it's not, it doesn't take a lot. To get started. And then you start moving in some basic wisdom. God keeps adding. He just keeps adding. Because actions speak louder than words. You say, oh, God, give me wisdom. And then you're doing things that you know better than to do. Father, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the fires of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the shaking, moving works of the Holy Ghost in this life. Fires, the Holy Ghost. The fire of your presence, oh God. Great calling out and separation. Fire of his presence, the fire of the Holy Ghost is a, a separating, a dividing presence. It divides between the world and the armies of Egypt. Those people that God has come and rescued. Separating, dividing work of the Spirit of the living God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will embrace holiness upon the bells of the riders written across, as it were, the foreheads of every person's face. Holiness unto the Lord is the crown we wear. Holiness under the Lord. What do you need? Okay. I want to completely surrender. I want my things to be in God's perfect will. I want 
Jesus fully in my life. I mean, I'm gonna, I want to go that straight and narrow with him. Okay. Well, how do you think that happens? I want to get, start, get deep in the Word of God. And total surrender, 100% surrender. I want to just get rid of self. I, want, I don't want self in the way anymore. Well, how do you think that happens? How, let me tell you how that happens. You just begin to, just begin to, just begin to praise Him. Just begin to love on Him. Just begin to thank Him for His, for His mercy and grace towards you. Just begin to praise Him as your Redeemer. Okay. And have to try real hard here. It's mostly just it's mostly just being happy. There's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of things come out against being happy though, isn't doesn't there? Well that's the battlefront. Now you got it identified. Just got light just got shine shown on it. That's right, it's not cloaked anymore. Huh? Are you with me? Hallelujah. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Ah, uh, and your rapture's soul now finds this joy flowing in the river. Flowing. 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 Glowing. Showing forth his praises. Father, I thank you for taking. Jonathan's life, making him a fiery witness of your presence, showing him the beauty and the glory of what it means just living with you. Just living with you. Just living with you. Just living with you. In Jesus' name, upon your head and upon your body and upon your spirit and your soul, the blood of Jesus is sprinkled. Upon your life, Upon your spirit, upon your soul, the Holy Ghost is poured out. What is it that you want? Okay. Okay. Now, Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you've given to anyone who asks. Father, we thank you that you're the one who supplies that which we need. We don't have to go try to find it on our own. You're the one who gives us the hunger and thirsting. You're the one who gives us the passions. You're the one who gives us the revelation, the understanding, the insight. You're the, the one who opens up our eyes and causes us to see. 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 I speak to your heart. I speak to your heart. And I command you to have a new heart. I'm not talking spiritually. You already have one. I'm talking about that physical heart. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command your heart to be healthy and whole. Jesus. 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 Jesus, do this work right now. In Jesus' name. Heaven's glory flows here. In Jesus' name. Every restraint is removed. In Jesus' name. Only the life and the goodness and the blessings of the Lord upon you. You just lift your hands towards heaven. I just, want, I just want you to begin to praise him now. Just
And you just keep doing that right there. Don't stop. He failed. He failed. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Out of your belly flows these expressions of the Spirit of the living God. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Castate in amache. Be filled. Ixator anangeshe. Be filled. Mangasate. Every hindrance get out of the way. Tactunstun. Nangaraba. Just let this side go. Yeah. Let that flow. Let the glory of heaven flow through your life. Sikatene. Just get a mon say yatea. Sikana ne itche. Nangache. Yeah. That's it. Picate. 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 In Brosatai, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You just stay right there. Piazzasumuni. Ticatai nasai. Kiara baba. Kiara baba baba. In Jesus' name. And Jesus, and there's the side too. There it is. There it is now. There's the flow. There it is. Just <laughs> that's how you yield to the Holy Ghost now. See that? That ain't that hard, is it? What is it that you want? I want to be able to flow from more in the Holy Ghost and be more, be more, be more <laughs> Okay, that's good. That's exactly what the Lord wants. So now that you're in agreement with him, just do it. It's just a wonderful thing when people realize they're not trying to talk God into something. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Here, I want you to come stand up here. I want you to stand up here. Stand up here. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven. Stand up. Lift your hands towards heaven. Close your eyes. Father, Leslie's asking for more understanding about a flow and your glory and your anointing. So in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, receive now. Receive more. God's got more. What is it that you want? Tell me that again. Let me just tell you right now, that, that's just confusion. It's just confusion. It's, it's a lot easier to walk with the Lord than that. And that's a second guess thing. Just commit your way to Him. And then let Him take care of you. You don't know where you're coming or going or whatever. Huh? Can you raise up one part of your body from the dead? Can you make one? Can you change anything about your life? Huh? 
No, you can't. The Lord tries to tell us, gives all kinds of descriptions. A leopard cannot change his spots. You can't change you. The Ethiopian cannot change the color of his skin. You can't change you. You can't make yourself 18 inches higher. Taller. Huh? You might be able to make yourself, you know, with high heels. <laughs> three, four inches taller. But 18 inches, there's no way. Cubit. Just commit yourself to the Lord and be just happy. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Just walk around praising him. I live so, we live so far beyond human help. We're so far out there. We're so far beyond human help. It's easy for us. But I believe that it takes a bit for people to get out beyond the realms of human help. Where they can provide for themselves and take care of themselves. Amen. Amen. I pray that you experience the joy of it. Right after the fright of it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, look, the Lord loves you. He loves you. He's so tenderhearted. He's so easy. He's so easy. He hates sin and iniquity and he won't justify it in any way. His wrath is as his fear. But, I'm going to tell you, with the slightest little bit of willingness, my goodness, Father floods in with all his love and kisses, all of his hugs and blessings, embraces, gives us all of his gifts, holds nothing back from us. Have you ever heard or ever thought that there could ever be such a one as he who holds, who holds the power of everything? It all belongs to him. And yet he tells you and me, come, I'll give you everything that I have. I want you to enjoy it. I want to see what you'll do when you function with this power. He's amazing. He says to you and me, no matter, see, no matter who we are or what we've done, here's God. Loving us with his only begotten son. See, the sacrifice, the offering that's made for sin, was the means by which every bit of that iniquity was killed and destroyed and done away with. So that we could stand there holy. It was all broken off. All of it was cut off. Because... That sacrifice took on all the uncleanness and impurity of our state. That's how the priest was able to become holy, to enter into the holy of holies. That there was a sacrifice that could take off all of his impurity and all of his evil estate. So that now he could be holy. No more impurity there. Christ Jesus bore on his own body our impurities. Our sins and iniquities on the tree. So that you and I could be made that which that shining, bright, beautiful, wonderful thing that Father has always desired. The righteousness of God. I pray that your eyes will be open. That you may begin to praise your Redeemer. You may begin to understand what good things he's done for you. Because when you do, you'll turn your life over to him. You won't hold back no more for yourself. You'll be so blessed just to live for him. I'm with him. <laughs> I'm with him and he's with me. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm his and he's is, is mine. We're the branches. He's the vine.
Father, we thank you that you grant us repentance unto life. There was a person here the other day, and they said, you know, I, I, I just want to continue doing it my way. I, I, I just want to go out and basically, quote, unquote, have fun. I don't want to surrender to the Lord. I don't want to surrender my life to the Lord right now. And, you know, the Spirit of the Lord just, I asked, by the Spirit of the Lord, I just asked her, I said, are you going to be okay with hell then? If you were to die in your sins tonight, are you going to be okay with an eternity without God? And of course, the answer was no. Father's not willing that any perish. And all, we should serve him because we love him and because of all the good things that he's done. But I'm going to tell you right now. People need to just understand that the consequences is worth evaluating too. The consequence of disobedience is unbearable. And if we can't, if we don't have enough wisdom and insight to get it, that his ways of life and his laws of life can't be compromised and that they're so wonderful and they're so good, that we can have enough wisdom to realize that we're not interested in burning forever. All of us are that smart. We may not be smart enough to see why Father's chosen his way. Why he does the things he does. Why he is pure and loves purity and loves holiness and loves righteousness. And loves truth. And loves love. We might not be smart enough to understand that. But we should be smart enough to recognize that the wages of sin is death. God will not justify the wicked. God will not pardon iniquity that is harbored within the life of a person who's not willing to repent. You see what I'm saying? Anybody, everyone, everywhere, the sincere heart, Father provides it so that you can be willing to be transparent before God and before men. Simply say to the Lord, I don't want the ways of this world. I don't want the ways of sin and iniquity. I'm not going to hide in the realms of sh the shadows or darkness. I want to come right out here into the spotlight of your love and your grace. And I want everything about my life to be revealed in you. I want change in every area. I will not harbor any secret sin. I will not hold on to anything that is wrong or evil or displeasing unto you. Father, I'll tell you, Father, make sure that that everything that is, he's purposed for our life be established in our life. It's just that easy. It's not going to out, happen outside of relationship with him, though. It's not going to happen through the context of religion. It won't happen through the context of ritual. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Prophesy. I said, prophesy in Jesus' name. From this day forward, you start prophesying. I remember the first time that prophecy came on me in such a very strong way. I was driving down the road. I was on a trip. It was a long trip. I think it was like a 12-hour, 13-hour trip. And the spirit of prophecy came upon me, and I just prophesied. I prophesied for a long, I don't know how long. Just prophesied a very long time. Go ahead, prophesy in your car. It says, it, it, it actually, the springboard of it is praising him and worshiping him. That's the springboard of it. Giving thanks with a cymbal and the harp. Hallelujah. The shouts, just praising him. It's the springboard of prophecy. The Lord takes it to a whole nother level than that which 
Asaph was able, Asaph the seer, and David the king and prophet, and, and, and Samuel the prophet of God was able to impart to that group that then imparted to every generation, even, to, um, even into, throughout the captivity in Babylon. Did you notice when they came back, they were still knowing how to praise and sing and prophesy? They didn't lose it. Even through the captivity of Babylon. Even through the rebellion and the apostasy of their nation, there was still a people who, hang, who stood, as Elijah said concerning even the iniquity of Israel. God said to Elijah, have 6,000 that have not bowed the knee. Hallelujah. Oh, to manje. Faith, what would you like from heaven? You want to be touched by the master. Lift your hands towards heaven. Touched in Jesus' name. Touched. 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 Breathe on me, burn in me, Holy Spirit, let your fire burn in me. Breathe on me, Holy Ghost fire burn in me. Let your fire burn in me. Heaven now, your glory, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, we just thank you that right out of face belly begins to flow the rivers of the Holy Ghost. Sutran de Iktufara. And Father, I just thank you for the gift of healing and the gift of faith and faith. Nesoprona. The gift of healing now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The gifts. Ha, 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 ha. Breathe on me. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, let your fire burn. What is it that you want? You want you mean to tell you how that can happen? You ready? Yes. You need to relax. You're trying too hard. It's just that simple. Pressure's off now, ain't it? Hey? Just relax. Because God's going to use you more than you can ever, you could ever think it or ask. He's going to use you beyond anything that's ever happened in the past. Now, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, a whole new understanding, a whole new insight to it all. Hallelujah. A whole new capacity. You didn't get here by accident. Uh, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't just show up by accident. You're under divine assignment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Made acceptable in the beloved. Don't have to earn anything. Hallelujah. Have access by the Holy Ghost. Don't have to strain. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What's up? What do you want? You said some things last Sunday, beautiful things about the prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at me. So what do you want? Whatever he wants to use me is that's what because it's just burns inside me. 
Okay. Okay. So tell me exactly what you want. What do you want? <laughs> I want <laughs> I want an increase as well. And that beautiful rounds of prayer. Okay. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you pour out your spirit of prayer and supplication on anybody who wants it. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> Being his presence is not hard or you know his yoke is not heavy. It's a beautiful thing, standing, standing before the king <laughs> and ministering before his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness of the Holy Ghost. Eh? Thank you for the goodness of your presence, for your wonderful work of redemption in the life. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that you provided for us. Father, I thank you that your ears right now are open into my prayer. Father, that you see and behold the situation that's taking place right here in this church that you started called the Abiding Place. And Father, I thank you that you do this work by your own might and by your own power that you place within our hearts, so oh God, causing us to stand here and prophesy for these 30 years. We thank you, Father, that you bring it to pass, that you do it. Father, that you raise up in this place a people, God, so hungry for you, so yielded to you, that whatever you ask, they'll do it. Father, we thank you that the rivers of your love will flow through this place. Your rivers of love will throw, flow through us. That your rivers of joy, your rivers of peace, which are all expressions of your rivers of life, your life. The quality and the quantity and the value of your life flow through us that all the world might see that there is a risen Savior living in you and me, in the midst of us. Amen? Amen. Well, let me just say, please don't forsake worshiping the Lord with an offering. So I said, well, why do we need to do that? It just costs us to come to church. Every time we go to church, it's got to cost. No. No. No, the act of worship is a privilege, and through it, Father works a miracle. Now, if you can understand that, if you understand that, that the act of worship, through the act of worship, God works a miracle. As you're worshiping him, God works a miracle of provision in the realms of the anointing. Whew. When you worship him in any dimension, whether it's, doesn't matter what area it is. Finance is just one quantitative expression of it. God works a miracle in multiplication. Smallest acts of obedience, never forget it. Smallest acts of obedience work the greatest miracles of faith. Amen.